Emotiva fans, this is Damon Steele with Emotiva Audio, and I'm here today to show you how to install the expansion modules in the RMC1. All right, today I'm going to show you how to install the XLR expansion module and also the Phono expansion module for the RMC1. Included in the kit will come the wiring harnesses to do so and also a ground strap for your body. Uh, you will need a drill drive or a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, to complete the task. So the first steps we want to take here, we're going to turn power off, all right? So just from the back panel switch above the power cord, kill power going to the processor. Then we're going to proceed with removing the screws down both sides and two in the back. All right, so we do have, I'm going to move the power cord for convenience here. Uh, we do have three screws down the side along the top, two screws in the back, and then three more screws down this side. So I'm gonna proceed with removing the screws. It's kind of nice to have a drill drive with a torque so that you don't over torque these when you reinstall. All right, now the lid at this point simply, it kind of clamshells into the front here so you want to lift from the back of the machine and rotate forward and then just lift out. So this lip edge is underneath the aluminum front face. All right, now we want to be sure to install the grounding strap. Uh, this will be included in the kit. So way we don't electrocute anything inside the machine and break anything. So the, the antenna um, is actually, the FM antenna is actually a really good grounding point uh, on the back of the chassis. Um, we don't want to really uh, ground to any of these painted surfaces um, as they don't provide uh, a very good grounding point. Okay, now we have three slots on the back um, for expansion modules. Uh, these first two slots uh, from left to right are input slots. Uh, this third slot is primarily uh, an output slot for future expansion, but uh, you can install the Phono module or the XLR module in any in any one, um, it doesn't really matter. They will auto-populate and provide inputs through the menu. All right, now we're gonna proceed with removing the first blanking strip for the first expansion bay. And I'm gonna try to hold the plate in place as I remove the last screw. And then just gently on the inside, remove the plate and bring that out. All right, I'm gonna grab that screw there that kind of ran away from me, and then we're gonna continue with the second bay. Of course, if you only bought one expansion, there's no need to remove both, but we're stowing the installation of both, so we're gonna remove both today. And of course, this one's a little bit more difficult to get to, but you can reach it from the inside and just kind of hold it in place and remove that guy. Mindful to, to keep up with those screws, uh, you will need those to reinstall the new expansion bay. If you would like to remove the HDMI board, uh, it will give you greater access for installing the middle expansion module, uh, though you don't have to. Uh, it's just if you feel uh, that you want a little more room, uh, that would be to remove all three screws in the top of the HDMI board and all 10 screws along the back. We will give you a video link below uh, for another video of removing that board and reinstalling that board. Uh, I'm going to continue with the board in. All right, so now that we have got the blanking plates removed, we've got our screws here uh, for attaching or installing the new um, 
expansion modules. What we want to do is take the wiring harness that comes with it, and it's it's non-directional. You can you can use either end. Um, there are uh, keyings that you want to slide uh, into the appropriate slot and and fully seat that connector really nice, okay? Now we're gonna come inside the chassis and I find that it's a little bit easier if I go ahead and install this as well. So there's, again, uh, key slots. There is uh, an open bay here. It's the only open bay so you can't uh, use the, grab the wrong one. And then so I'm going to Slide that guy in like so. It clicks kind of, but you want to make sure you get it fully seated, fully um, embedded there. And then we're going to slide this guy in very carefully between everything. And just kind of hold it in place. I'm grabbing the RCAs on the front to kind of hold it in place. And then now we're going to come back around the front. So I'm going to loosely put the first screw in. So I've got a little bit of slop to make this right on this side. Still gonna leave them just a smidge loose till I'm done, okay? We'll come back and snug them all up at the end. There we go. All right, very nice. All right, now that we have the phono expansion bay in place, got the, the uh, four screws on the front side secured and we've got the wiring harness here, now we have to attach the ground lead. Uh, this lead is soldered to the phono board um, and we will be attaching it to the screw on the power supply. This will give you a good ground for your phono. So we're just gonna back this screw out. Nope, don't have to come all the way out with it. You can actually slide this up under there, like so. Yeah. Very nice. And this wire can just reside along the side of the chassis. All right. Now we're going to move um, to the XLR expansion. And a note, I, I made mention of this earlier, but um, these can go in either slot. You can put the phono over here, the XLR over here. If you just buy one, it can go here. It's an easier slot to get to. Uh, if your cabling prohibits you going this far over, uh, you can install one in this slot. So again, we are going to apply the harness. Okay, make sure it fully clicks in. Okay, you got your keyways. And then, this one's gonna be a little bit funner to get to. But if you can see its, its connection point there on the digital board, there's an opening. I'm just gonna kinda feel my way in there. Okay, making sure I'm fully seated, kinda pressing on either side, all right. Now I'm going to slide this guy in. I kind of want to come around this expansion board. Oh, this little guy, you can easily just kind of take this ribbon cable and kind of roll him out. He's, he's sitting there good. You don't have to worry about him a whole lot. Just be gentle with him. Okay, and then just ever so gently kind of rotate this guy in place, kind of holding this in place with one hand. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put a screw on the end of my driver. All right, and then I'm just going to, again, loosely kind of throw one in there. Grab another. Kind of reach under. All right, and I'm gonna go back and 
kind of just take a look, see inside, make sure all my cabling is routed properly and there's no pinches or binds, fully seated on all connectors. Kind of shove that ribbon cable back up under there. And you're all set. Now, as you plug the machine up, turn it on, you will see more inputs available for AudioPath. We'll, we'll demonstrate that uh, with the on-screen menu here in a minute. All right, now that we have the uh, expansion modules installed, uh, where well, you can go ahead and remove the wrist straps, so we're not gonna be digging inside the processor anymore. Uh, and then we're gonna install the lid, so. What I find is, is easy is to, is to take the lid and kind of lean it up at about a 45 degree angle and be mindful of both sides. So I'm going to get this side portion on the inside of the chassis on both sides and then just kind of bring this guy forward so that it hooks into the front lip very nice and clean. And then we're going to slide that lid down in the back. Now all my holes should line back up very easily and we will start installing the, the screws. Okay guys, now that we have the expansion modules installed, the lid on the unit, unit is powered back up again. Um, it was just a simple startup. There's, there's no need uh, for firmware updates. Uh, if you're on the latest uh, revision of code, these will auto populate. So as I bring up the menu and you will recognize that your inputs for phono and balanced are available. These names actually auto-populate depending on which slot you plug them in, uh, but you don't have to worry for that too much as you can go into the setup and as with any other input, you can rename the input to your liking. So balance three, Again, you can add the name. Uh, remembering that balanced one in is the original input that came with the machine. Two and three are the added ones. And then phono two um, is the additional phono input. And uh, you can rename it as well and set uh, all other provisions that you like for that input. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate your time and um, happy listening.